Swedish Iranian scientist faces imminent risk of execution in Iran. Um, human rights groups warn that Ahmed Reza Dajal the Jalali, a Swedish Iranian scientist, is J Jalali. I think I think Thank the D is, si is silent. Thank yeah. you. Um, is sent is scheduled to be sentenced to death in Iran on espionage charges and faces imminent execution. It would be amongst the first executions of a dual national in Iran. The Jalali is a medical doctor. Jalali. Jalali, sorry, <laughs> is a medical doctor and lecturer based in Stockholm, Sweden. He was arrested in 2016 after he traveled to Iran at the official invitation of the University of Tehran and was later convicted of espionage on behalf of Israel. He was accused of providing information to Israel to help it assassinate several senior Iranian nuclear scientists. His family and friends said that he was forced into confessions. Um, any mention of this, the reasoning behind this? Well, he's accused of spying for Israel. No, but the actual reasoning. Because oh. spying... Okay, here, let no, me actually I'll, tell you what I've... I can I've, answer that what, question. Yes, this is about somebody because else. Because of the assassination yeah. of the other guy? Yeah, can I, yeah but... Well, yeah, this is about... Can I... I mean, go on. There, there what I've, one article I was reading about this was really interesting, and it was talking about how a lot of other rights groups and whole other governments have noted that um, is Iran's imprisonment of more and more dual nationals or foreign citizens is likely more about trying to bargain for um, concessions on the international the, stage. No, this is about someone else in Belgium, I think, that was a po Iranian politician that w was about to carry out one right. of the great biggest attacks if it was successful. And we actually need to cover that because this is more about that. Like this, there's something, there's a subtweeting going on here in the background that this is more about, <clears throat> this is a common tactic by Iran's government. First of all, this, they always go to this accusation, right? Um, spying for Israel, spying for Israel. Like it's a de facto charge that they don't need any evidence for. So basically what happens is that, by the way, this by itself justifies all the sanctions on Iran without any of the nuclear talks. Because what Iran does is that they want something from a country. And I'm actually, I'm actually disappointed that we haven't talked about this more because this is a major thing. Wow, you guys are actively doing other things. Um, so, cold. Suzanne, are you coming? I'm listening. No. I'm just cold. No, it's okay. Oh, my God. All right. Can I, I'm going to finish this thought, okay? Um, what was I even saying? Yeah, okay. So saying this is what, this Ir is what Iran Yeah, it's does. okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, I, I got this. I got this, okay? Um, what Iran does is that they want something from another country and what they do in ret uh, to get that from another country is like they look at um, wh who they have in Iran that is a dual citizen of that country and them, right? This is such evil. This is such evil. This is such an evil policy. Like it's beyond words. Like th they just go hunting for dual citizens in Iran whenever they want something very urgent from another country, right? They want something from Belgium. They're like, oof, look at, let's see who we have. They use their own citizens, Iranian citizens as bargaining trips, uh, bargaining uh, chips. They go like, mm, Iranian Belgium citizen living in Iran. Let's go hunt them down and arrest them and put, in, put them on death row with the accusation of, spying for Israel and say, see if what Belgium has to say about this. And basically they think that, so they act like we get to do this because we don't recognize dual citizens because this is our citizens and we could do whatever we want with them. But they do, so they don't so like, we're not doing something to your citizen. This is Iranian citizen, but they do that because they know that when somebody is a dual citizen of Iran and another country, they rely on the fact that that other country cares about that person's lives more than Iran cares about that person's life. 
Like, what does that say about your government that your policy of taking people hostage to use them as bargaining chips is with the knowledge that, yes, this person is a citizen of Iran and that country, but that country is going to do way more to save this person's lives than you. You are the actual reason why this person's life is in danger. So you are signaling to your own citizen, like yeah, to your own people, like we will put your life at danger because other if you happen to be a citizen of another country, we know that they're going to come for you to try to save you. And we're using you as a way to make a deal with them. How evil is that? How evil is that that you are using the, the tactic that you have against your enemy relies on them caring about people more than you do. That's your, that's your, that's your, weapon against them their humanism you're using their humanism as a weapon against them that's how evil your government is and what's happening here is that okay so that's like this has been going on for years this is like what i just described to you that has been going on for 40 years okay or 35 years okay what's happening here is that in belgium Something extraordinary has happened. I don't know. We, ha we should have talked about this. I'm going to do a live stream on this. In Belgium, there is a there was a potential attack. Was it in, in Belgium, right, Rifka? This was in Belgium, right? Um, that was because of Israel. Israel gave information to Belgium and other officials that ma they managed to stop this attack. But this attack, if it was carried out, it would have been one of the largest attacks, Terry attacks in, 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 in Europe in the past, I don't know when, because it was a large gathering. And that's so just the size of this attack was already huge, but it's also significant because the person that was going to carry out the attack was an Iranian citizen. Usually, when Iran does Terry attacks like this, they use they're proxies and they're careful not to use any of their citizens to do this. They use like Hezbollah or some other proxy so that, it, it, that, that Iran doesn't get the backlash itself, right? But it was beyond just an Iranian citizen. And Rifka, correct me if I'm wrong about this. It was an Iranian politician. It was an Iranian politician that was about to carry out this attack. Absolutely huge. This is huge. We huge. need to cover this. So now what Iran is doing is like they this guy had a court date in Belgium and he didn't show up to his court date. And Iran is trying to, to save that guy. So they went and kidnapped this person in Iran, a doctor. A doctor is somebody that is so like a value, such an important, such a gifted person that is supposed to be like somebody in other countries they would cherish them. But like this guy is such a treasure to any country that could call this person a citizen and instead of being celebrated he's being now he's like on death row for being a spy for israel right and what belgium is doing as a response is like go eat a bag bag of i don't know what you know like belgium is not giving into this go right? eat a bag of eggplants eggplants go eat a bag of eggplants okay because belgium for is standing up to this because other countries when iran was like taking hostage their citizens dual u.s iranian dual citizens u.s i don't know whatever other country dual citizens or uk especially uk they come and they get underneath like iran you know what can we do do you want some of your prisoners in the, in the uk you want can we release those can we do this deal with you can you please let our citizens go but belgium is like you know what Go screw yourself, right? We're going to double down and arresting this. And I think this is like not negotiating with terrorists. It's taking it to like, yeah, when we don't, when we say we don't negotiate with terrorists, that that includes states sponsor of terrorists, right? Um, and if Belgium managed to like, so Belgium is going on full on and like, no, we're not, we're going to double down instead of actually giving into this. And if that happens and there's this woman now in Belgium, she's now getting the government of Belgium to not only keep on with the prosecution of this person in, in Belgium, but to be like, you know what, if you execute, execute this person, that's the end of all trade agreements with Iran. And that's going, that's going to go move forward. So they're like, not only stepping back. They're like, you know what? You threaten us. We threaten you with something that you care about. So, guys, this is what to anybody that is against sanctions and against Iran, you have your this government kidnapping your citizens. Mm -hmm. If you don't, I mean, this justifies going to war with a country like this. 
But if you think it, if you th if you don't if you think war is too much, if you don't think that this ju does, does, doesn't justify full on not just sanctions, complete and an abandonment of any trade with a country like that that is kidnapping your citizens as a way to get favors from you. If you don't think this justifies sanctions, I don't know what you think. What do you want to do in response to something like this? What do you? What's the response then? Wait. Anyway. So Belgium was taking that stance, even though this man is a Swedish national. Rivka, no, Rivka. Well, no, I couldn't it's, it's, hear what you were saying, but this guy is Swedish. Yeah, so, but, but it was attack was point, in Belgium. Well, yeah, I know on. that. Um, I was gonna Let say I couldn't up. hear what you were saying, but I know that this is part of this payback thing. Regardless of wherever there was any attack foiled, this is how they do it. They trade in Iranian blood with other countries right. to get whatever it is that they want. I also feel like it's some kind of payback for any, you know, um, Western nation who may be, you know, either aligned with the sanctions. I got to, I'm trying to look this up. I remember there was one in Bahrain in 2015, there was a foiled terrorist attack in Belgium in, in Bahrain. They just claimed that they foiled a terrorist attack in from Iran in September, but I couldn't hear what you were saying, part of it. But I also know that what you were saying about using their own people and counting on the morality of the other, of their enemy more, it's a very Hamasy, very Hamas-like move. Um, All right, so Belgium is involved. So I know this guy is Swedish, but Belgium is involved for sure. They're at the bargaining table? Yes um hold on let me we need to do a live stream on exactly what's happening here okay um sure. scholars okay. such as jalali who is affiliated with belgium's um virgi university brussels okay so he is associated with the brussels with the belgium university uh our servants of the public interest okay so yeah we need to do an entire live stream and 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 what's happening between which groups on this because Sweden is involved. Uh, hold on, am I still about the 2016 2015 one that was supposedly in Brussels that was apparently Iranian backed because the one that just recently supposedly was foiled was in Bahrain, which was supposed no, to be okay. Yeah. Wait, but I have something oh, important. Got to it. Up. Terror trial in Antwerp. This is what, yeah, it is. Mm. Iranian diplomat, three others face prosecution over alleged bomb plot in 2018 in opposition gathering. Yep. The device was nicknamed the PlayStation, but according to Belgian prosecutors and intelligence officials, it was no game. Allegedly handed off to a Vienna based Iranian diplomat in an to an Iranian-Belgian couple at a pizza hut in Luxembourg in June 2018. I said 2016. Oops. It was a powerful bomb intended to attack a convention of thousands of opponents of the Iranian regime that was going to happen just outside Paris a few days later. A tip from Israeli intelligence to European authorities stopped the attack. Iran this Friday, this was from November 27th, uh, Iranian diplomat, the couple, and a fourth alleged compass go on trial for charges in the Belgian city of Antwerp. Yep, exactly. Um, officials across Europe amassed reams of detailed evidence of the plot they said was authorized at the highest levels of the government in Tehran. Um, I have something important that I want to address as well. I just need to read this. Jalali had mm -hmm. traveled to Iran at the official invitations of the University of Tehran. Oh, hey, that's in my, the university I was in. Uh, was but, but was arrested by intelligence ministry agents on 24th April 2016 and spent three months in the ministry uh, detention center. There have been reports that Iran had been hoping to trade his, uh, what? what is this? Repeat, reprieve, reprieve, reprieve for Freedom. the... Okay, for the release of the 
Iranian diplomat Asadullah Asadi, that's the guy, that's the guy that was had the, all the explosions in his car, uh, on trial in Belgium. So that guy is in Belgium for allegedly taking part in a plot to explode the bomb at a rally of Iranian opposition uh, figures in 2018. He is refusing to appear in the trial, claiming diplomatic immunity. Oh, so that's why they used a diplomat. Well, maybe that's not. Maybe right. that's convenient. Maybe. That's yeah, but that's very interesting. <laughs> um, so I had something that I wanted to address. This comment from uh, Troll saying, "What I just do not get is why dual citizens are so stupid as to go to Iran when it is so obvious that the regime is likely to do stuff like this. Not victim blaming, just wondering." Okay, well, there's a lot to address here, but what I want to say is that it doesn't even matter if you're a dual citizen or not. You cannot be an Iranian citizen in any regard. For example, Australian British lecturer um, uh, Kylie Moore Gilbert has just been released um, from two years of imprisonment in Iran in exchange for three Iranian prisoners who were linked to a botched um, uh, Terry attack in Bangkok. Um, and she was imprisoned for two years in iran because she had an israeli boyfriend right like so she was accused of being a spy for israel because her boyfriend was israeli and she just happened it, so it doesn't even matter if you are a citizen there or not it does it, matter well yes it, it, I'm, what i mean to say is that like any like anyone can get it like but it's more likely if you're a dual citizen. So yeah. I think I think I actually think Troll is correct. Um, I mean, I think you shouldn't like. No, I think no dual. I mean, there's so many examples of dual citizens getting into trouble um, that I don't think I, I think it's it's really. I'm sorry to say, but it's idiotic to go to Iran if you're a dual citizen. I guess citizen. what I mean to say is that not being a dual citizen, like having no citizenship in Iran, is not going to protect you either. Yeah, but you are you a much higher chance of being a target. A much, much higher chance of being a target if you're a dual citizen. So that you should take that into account and not go to Iran. I mean, it's Iran's loss, I guess, right? Um I'm just trying to find exactly. I need to find. I'm going to, guys, I'm going to do a live stream later on Belgium's response because Belgium is like, I can't, I saw a Persian article about this, but I can't find anything English about this with regards to this whole and uh, not backing down. Once I found it, I might do an entire live stream in it because this, this is going to be, this might end up being extremely uh, shifting shifting everything in a direction that because Europe is now treating both Germany, Belgium, Sweden, it used to be United States and Israel were like extremely aggressive and European countries were like in the between or like, oh, let's be aggressive, but not too aggressive. But this attack, this attempted attack um, might really switch things around. Okay. Might really uh, change the way that many, many may uh, change the way Many European countries are going to look at uh, the way that they handle um, the work with Iran, and this is devastating for Iran because Iran, Iran's government was hoping things are going to change around now that Trump is lost, right? But uh, Europe is, yeah, it's going to make it. If Europe takes a more aggressive stance against Iran, if again, I love this, is if it's going to make it very difficult for Biden to renegotiate that deal. So we'll see what happens. Um, uh, Trell is saying, oh, don't get me wrong. I think any Westerner would be nuts going to Iran. I was thinking of cases like Nazanin, uh, yeah, Radcliffe. Yeah, she's she's still, yeah. Um, no, I think actually, Trell, I think dual citizens are, I don't think actually foreigners who are not dual citizens, I think they're pretty safe going to Iran, actually, to be honest. I don't think they, because for dual citizens, Iran thinks that they have a case that they could do whatever they want to them. Uh, if you're not a dual, if you're a foreigner, if you're like a Belgian citizen that is not an Iranian citizen and you go to Iran and you get arrested and you're on death row, that's like, hey, that's like, that's the end of the, I mean, no, like you're going to be freed like within weeks 
for even if they have anything against you there's no way they're gonna do there's yeah like if you're a, not a dual citizen there's no way they're going to execute you or even threaten you with but putting you on death row like that is an invitation of an outright like entire international you know crap storm like that's an invitation to an outright war or something like that right so yeah i think actually if you're not a dual citizen you're pretty safe but don't don't like but still i don't recommend it but still you can have was, a really bad time yeah go ahead i was gonna say something uh, to your point is that i there's the this having the dual citizenship makes you a bargaining chip for yes. iran but also if give, you're so that's what's attractive about you versus just a a national from another country is potential international incident that's not what they want they want leverage and that's what they see dual citizenships as you know they have the yeah, leverage the, over a country the reason why you're a leverage because in, there's an ambiguous like international law like it doesn't invite the, like everybody turning against you because you could technically say well this is our citizen right you don't have jurisdiction over telling us what to do with our citizen right but if somebody was not a dual citizen they wouldn't be able to use that as a bargaining chip because people are like yeah like you just arrested one of our citizens and now you're there on death row like yeah we, here comes our ships and our army and everything right um i mean that would be the natural reaction to that and subscribe everyone every single one of you is watching subscribe do it now do it do it now